Good morning. My name is Angie Paxson. I'm the Health and Wellness Director here at the Marshalltown YMCA, YWCA, here just to talk to you about Festivus. It's a CrossFit competition for the rest of us. So it is held here in Marshalltown at CrossFit 641, and it is a competition for those who have never done another CrossFit competition. Um, very beginner level, very beginner friendly. We are currently looking for volunteers and additional athletes if you're interested in that. So if you'd like more information about the event, whether it be to participate or to volunteer, you can give me a call here at the Y, 641-752-8658, or you could simply go to the website and find me there at ymca-ywca.org. Thanks and have a great day. As of Monday, August 10th, uh, the Aquatic Center is now closed for open swimming. We will still be open for swim lessons, water walking, lap swim, and our uh, adult tiny top program, or swim lesson program. Uh, so water walking will still go on uh, through September 21st. Uh, we'll have uh, water walking and lap swim times from 11.30 to 12.30, 4 to 5, and 7 to 8. And that's a new time. We've kind of bumped it up early to make sure we got done before dark. Uh, and swim lessons will still be going on between 9 and noon and uh, our adult swim class on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays will still be going on at 11.30 as well. So a few changes to the Aquatic Center happened a little earlier than normal but uh, due to the kind of COVID and a lot of our staff being college kids, they're being asked to return to school and can't leave then. So we just didn't have enough staff to finish out the season like normal. Yeah, so I, I'd probably just go to our website, uh, marshallmtownparkandrec.com. Uh, you can see all the updated aquatic schedules or give us a call at 754-5715 extension 1. Hi, I'm Mike Tupper with the Marshalltown Police Department. Uh, we want the community to be aware that the City of Marshalltown will be sending out city employees to conduct damage assessments as a result of the uh, storms that passed through our community on August 10th. Uh, these uh, uh, employees will be uh, checking structures and checking for um, properties that have significant damage so that we can uh, begin to conduct a damage assessment for our community that will, in the long run, help our community determine whether or not we're eligible for any state or federal disaster relief funding. Uh, it, it is possible that if you sustained significant major damage or your structure was destroyed, that the city will place a placard on your property and on that placard, it'll give you some instructions. And, and the main thing for you to be aware of is that you should call the uh, Marshalltown Housing Department and uh, discuss with them what your plan is for repairing or dealing with the damage on your property. If you have any questions about these placards, uh, please call the Housing Department and their number is 641-754-5756. They'll be happy to help you with any questions or concerns that you have. If your house or your property is placarded, you will have until September 15 to respond to the housing department with your plan or to call them with your questions so that they can help you resolve the issue. Again, if you have any questions, please call 641-754-5756. Thank you. Well, hi, everybody. I want to welcome you back to the library. It's been I don't want to say it's been an adventure, but um, I hope you know the library has been here trying to serve all of the community in you know, different ways and trying to make adjustments, first COVID and then now, of course, the recent derecho. One of the things that we've done, because we have limited resources in the building and we're going to show you what we mean, is that we've added a couple of picnic tables outside. We're actually going to probably add a third one. So you're welcome to come here and sit. You can use the Wi-Fi here. We do ask that, um, you know, you be, if somebody's waiting, it looks like they've got their laptop or something that, you know, maybe you, if you're not comfortable sharing, that, you know, you kind of limit your time. So it's not, you know, again, I know it's a nice place to sit under the tree in the shade, but, um, you know, we're do hoping this is to offer somebody to have a little more time with the, with the um, Wi-Fi. So if you have Wi-Fi issues too, let us know and we'll try to help you. But uh, we're going to go inside and we're going to show you some of the changes and we're going to talk about what's happening here at the library. So, um, you know, right now the best way is to check the Facebook page, the library's web page. But if you're like me and right now I have no internet at my house, 
uh, you can always call. Hopefully everybody's phones are working. I know during the, uh, the storm, I was having really spotty cell phone service. So um, on the outside of the building, one of the changes too is that we do ask that you return all your library materials outside, either the walk-up book drop or the drive-up book drop. I think lots of people are unaware that we have the drive-up book drop, so it's on the back side on the Lynn. So as you come up here, so also if you haven't used curbside pickup, and curbside is when you, you can go online and place a book on hold, or you can call us or email us, and then you park in one of the three curbside spots, and then you call us on the phone number listed on the board, and then we bring the books out to you. So, and we are happy to keep doing curbside. Now I know some people are eager to get back in the building, but curbside is a great way to go. So, but if you're coming into the building, please come here first, return your books at the book drop. So we've got the book one, the audio, and this is the trash bin. And I know sometimes people get a little confused, but uh, don't, don't put your books in the trash bin, please. So anyways, so please return everything here before you come in the building. Okay, so now we're gonna go in the back of the building. So here we come back here, and I can show you a couple things kind of behind the scenes. So one thing is, so curbside, for those of you who are doing curbside, you can see you know these purple bags now. Um, these are all the things that are waiting for people to come and pick them up. So you can see the assortment of items. We have people that have box loads of things. And I know sometimes people are very concerned about uh, their items haven't come off their record. That's because uh, we are quarantining items. This is actually pretty small. Uh, so these are all items that have been returned and they sit for five days, which is what the scientists have recommended. Um, and so then we check them in and then they come off your record. So again, I know people are, we have some people that like to see their items come off as soon as they return them and that's not happening. Okay, so now we're gonna go out to the public area. So we're gonna go out this door. So you can see this is where my staff spent a lot of time. So you'll see, of course, one of the immediate changes is like everybody, like Hy-Vee and Fairway, is we have lots of plexiglass. So, um, and there's a different way that you check books out. Uh, my staff can walk you through it. So, Lots of uh, hand sanitizing stations. So when you do walk through the doors between 12 and 6, right now, Monday through Friday, those are the current hours, with curbside pickup on Sundays from 1 to 3, you're going to stop here. And usually I'm here, or maybe another staff member, and I'm going to ask you a few questions about um, welcoming you back to the library. Thank you for wearing a mask. So you see that I'm wearing a mask, and all my staff's wearing a mask. Um, hand sanitizer station, have you been exposed to COVID? Um, do you have any questions? I'm gonna put a little sticker on the you that tells you the time, because you're allowed 45 minutes in the building. And then uh, you're welcome to come in. So um, the self-check is still in use if you want to go and get some books, or you would come to the desk and one of my staff would help you. So you can see that on and it's sad to us, I'll admit it, all the snow fencing <laughs> that we've put up. So right now, the library is not a gathering place. Um, and I hate to say that, it's really hard for us to say that. The library right now is come, kind of a grab and go express service. So in the youth department right now, of course they have amazing books and the playaways, and we actually just got this new collection of Disney, really wonderful books. But right now, there's no toys, there's no Legos, the iPads are all put away, the castle. Sadly, we've had to put Mickey Mouse away, which is very hard on us. So, um, but we do have wonderful books, and Joa and her team really want to help you uh, get things. Um, and certainly homeschoolers, we know there's a lot of people are looking at homeschooling. So please reach out to Joa LaVille, Youth Services Manager, about how she can help you. So anyways, but right now, that, that's it. And one of the things we did, and you may have seen our video 
for our most popular items, which is kind of starting here with the new books down to DVDs, is we actually move them. We physically, not I, <laughs> we physically move them to give a little more space for that social distancing and browsing. So you can see where the old lines were, and I think we'll actually keep it this way. We kind of like the space. So all the new books, the new DVDs, we've got some arrows on the floor, kind of trying to keep the traffic. Um, more space here. And for those of you who, like me, still have no cable and internet, we have lots of great DVDs, television shows, movies, uh, kids' things for the kids. So maybe you want to go back and watch The West Wing again, or Hill Street Blues, or I'm looking over there, I see Grizzly Adams, or new things like Succession, or Frankie and, uh, I don't remember what it's called, Frankie and Johnny. No, maybe not. Anyways. So we have lots of great things that you can check out. We still have the book sale. Um, right now, though, it's all exact change because we're not dealing with money. So if, you're in, if you want to buy a book, we can make it work, though. So then, as you can see, again, all the furniture has been kind of bundled up. And this is pretty much libraries all over the United States. So we're not doing anything out of the ordinary. Uh, a lot of libraries in Iowa have not even opened for this interior service. So Urbandale, uh, lots of other libraries, uh, they're just kind of doing the curbside. So we're kind of in between uh, Fort Dodge and West Des Moines have about the same service as we do. A lot of libraries are offering very limited service. Um, small libraries are doing appointments, kind of like going to the dentist. So, you know, everybody's kind of doing it on a different scale. So. Um, we have limited computer use here at the library right now. So um, 40 minutes to use a computer, you must make an appointment, um, bring a change if you need to make copies. And right now we're asking the computers are not for entertainment use, so not really YouTube videos or games, really for people who need to file insurance documents, FEMA, maybe something with DHS, uh, you know, obviously people want to connect with their families by email, but right now we just can't accommodate entertainment use because we've gone from 20 computers down to six. So if you think about that, and of course we're only open at limited times. But, um, you know, again, ask my staff for help. I mean, they can probably save you some time in terms of what you're doing, you know, and especially if you're looking to, to get to a website, you know, to file a claim or something. So they definitely want to help you. But right now, again, you can't come here and bring your laptop, your own device, and work in the building. But we do have the picnic tables outside. And a lot of people just sit in their cars. So I know it's going to be hot the next couple of days. Um, I don't know if it's through the weekend. But you know, again, we're trying to help you as much as we can. And the Wi-Fi is on 24 hours a day. So you know, if you maybe you work, you can come before or after work and do that. Um, what else? I'm trying to think what people ask us. Um, yeah, so right now we don't know the next phase. We're just kind of taking it, you know, we're waiting for school to open. We're kind of wanting to see if that has any impact. Uh, we consult regularly with the state library. We look at uh, the federal authorities uh, to see what the recommendations are and the best practices so that we can keep all of you safe and all of us safe and everybody else who's here at the library with you. But if you have any questions or concerns or comments, you can certainly reach out to me, Sarah Rosenblum, the director, and we'll certainly see. And maybe there's a suggestion of something that we can do. Um, we are busy cleaning things, but again, personal responsibility. So when you come in the building, you should use the hand sanitizer. I know there's one around the corner. You should um, uh, use it on the way out and just kind of assume anything you touch, you probably, you know, like, like we all learned in kindergarten and first grade is you should wash your hands, you know, very well. Um, and so that we can keep all of you safe and healthy. And, um, you know, we look forward to seeing you in the library and we look forward to, you know, next steps. But at this point, I just don't have that information. So thank you. Hi, my name is Pat Thompson. I'm public health nurse for Marshall County, and I'm glad to be here today. It's hot, 
as we've been experiencing, but we know we have some cooler weather ahead. It's toward the end of August, and, and that's a good thing. Um, I know we don't want summer to end, but still, you know, it's, there comes a time when it's, it's okay, and, we have, and it gives us a change of season that we enjoy, and fall is just a fun time of year. So, um, And we know the fall, this fall is gonna be different just like our spring and summer were than what we've had. Um, uh, our, our athletics in the fall will be changing, and, um, and if you're a real sports fan, you, there may be some disappointment moment, disappointing moments, but next year will be better, and we'll get back to the, the real thing sometime. You'll get to uh, do the tailgate and all that kind of stuff you like to do. You'll have to actually use your imagination and do a, a tailgate in your home or, you know, in a park or outside somewhere and just kind of... A stay gate. That's actually a very good idea. Stay gate, you know, you can set it all up like you were in your driveway like you would uh, in a parking lot. So it's, it's not that much different actually and you have some conveniences of home. So anyway, it'll be interesting to see what people come up with because they will. And also we know that the fall is going to bring, you know, our next seasons of course of Thanksgiving and Christmas and, and the New Year. So um, that will, we have to really think ahead about how we're going to manage our, our families that we love to see and our usual routine activities and our, our holidays that, we, that are so, so special to us because we've been doing them for years. How we're going to do it differently this year uh, with respect to keeping everybody safe. And it's just it's what it's been for six months and it's going to continue. So. Anyway, and, and when we get a vaccine, that'll be our ticket to and to um, um, get, uh, have an immunity to this virus because that's our that's the problem. We don't have immunity, and when we get that through a vaccine, that will really make a big difference. So please get your vaccine. That'll make um, help make it better for everybody. So uh, talking about heat, and it's um, you know our, most people have their air conditioning back if they have it, or they have a fan, or whatever they do to stay cool in the summertime. Most of us do. We realize there's some people that don't, maybe because they don't have uh, electrical uh, panels or whatever it would be attachment to their house. How's that? Um, that may be a problem, and and you know what, uh, my heart feels for you, and hopefully that'll be done very soon so you can get back to. Um, what, what, we, what we were accustomed to, how's that sound? Um, so with this heat, we also have to think about, you know, doing your work outside in the cooler part of the day. And some days there's, today, there doesn't look like there's any cooler part of the day, but, you know, lawns can be mowed later, activities can be done later, and uh, even if they don't happen until next week when it's supposed to be cooler, that's okay. Uh, kind of giving up on my lawn mowing because there's, no water and it's brown and it just doesn't make sense and with all the leaves and everything that are around here from our derecho that um, kind of blends in with everything else. How's that sound? Um, so um, wear your lighter clothes, get plenty of liquids, relax, enjoy these last dog days of summer. How's that sound? And uh, look forward to our cooler weather. So with the cooler weather and the change of seasons comes school starting and that starts next week or a couple weeks anyway, for some. Some are starting up already. Um, we know that there's going to be even more activity with school buses, kids being out and walking home to and from school and that type of thing. So like I always say, I invite you to slow down. I have to remind myself because I'm in the vehicle, I'm in the car. We know we teach our kids to watch for cars and look both ways and all those things that are so important. But remember, they're kids and we are the adults and we have control over a vehicle and we need to make sure that we consider them first because it's just just what we need to do and we do a good job of it most of the time we really do now school buses remember if there's a stop school bus with a uh, stop sign out and flashing lights you have to stop you have to stop it's a law and it's very important that we understand that um, you know experienced drivers we've been around and we know that rule but younger people may not always think about it even though they've been given that information it, that doesn't mean that they're thinking and so let's keep reinforcing that with our, our all the drivers in our our families okay slow down watch for cars or watch for people and and uh, watch for school buses um, and actually school bus it does take a little while because you can just imagine um, 
someone in the house is saying you need to get your backpack, you need to get your shoes on, all those types of things because kids are kids. So it does take a while sometimes for them to get to the bus, but that's okay. We'll have to choose different routes if we run into school buses always on our route. Um, so kids, when they're in school, it's going to be a different year for them, and they're going to need our support as far as uh, all the changes. Um, um, some of them don't even know that it's way different. Um, children that are starting kindergarten, uh, actually this is their first year and they don't have a plan from last year to go by, so we can help make it uh, as normal as we can. And one of the things we can do is make sure they have a good breakfast in the morning, that they're sent off with the right clothing on that's appropriate for the weather, and, and actually in, a, in good spirits because we all know there's been a time with a child when it's been really hard to get them out of the house and it's not always a fun moment and it's something we want um, televised, how's that sound, you know, because they're kids and we're adults and, and we're moms and you know how it all goes. So just sending them off with um, a good spirit within ourselves and with them will be a good way for them to start their day, even if we get frustrated. So um, let's see. Uh, you know, school's going to be different too because of social distancing and um, not being able to play with the friends the way they want to at school, And but that's going to end. So we just have to keep supporting kids through all of that. Um, and also we have to teach our children to respect um, distance, like I said, social distancing. And, and I see moms and dads all over the place, you know, they have little masks and they have their children with them because, you know, we, we live in a house together and we congregate together and they take their kids and show them how to do it and that's the best example they could ever have for moms and dads and we know grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles and friends really help with all of that too so setting good examples is very very important um, so we talked about the little the things we we're missing at the fair last week so we won't go through that again but the fair is done I talked to a gal that actually went to the fair and and it was nice being there she said the gardens were gorgeous so if you're one of the master gardener people that appreciates that or someone who appreciates the work that master gardeners do I understand that the beds were beautiful this year as always so also in the fall uh, flu vaccine you know public health talks flu vaccine year-round because flu is here year-round. It's a virus, and, but we're more likely to get it or be exposed when we're um, in close congregate settings. We're learning that new word. We used to say close settings or we're close to each other, and now it's congregate settings where we're together, and so it's easy to catch the flu virus. And, it's, and the COVID virus is many, many more times um, 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 infectious so, but you don't want the seasonal flu either. So get your flu vaccine if you have a, especially, if, well, get it anyway, but if it's uh, through your work, through your uh, insurance, through Medicare, get your flu vaccine because it's very, very important because you do, because you could get both of them at the same time. That's just the truth and you don't want that. Um, and we know that there can be um, flu vaccine, or excuse me, COVID can be um, not as, um, rough or not as um, uh, debilitating as um, on some, for some people than others, but the ones that get it, that, that remember it and tell me about it, you don't want it. So, so we need, still need to do our social distancing, go out for um, your essentials and, uh, and make that your time, but remember that you please wear a mask because you, when I wear my mask, I protect you from me when you wear your mask you're protecting me from you. And, and with COVID, it's all about, and they, even with seasonal flu, it's all about sharing the same breathing, okay? Can I say it any better than that? It's about sharing our viruses and germs by being too close together. You know, we say six feet, what if we find out it should have been six and a half feet? What if this, you know? Well, I know six feet wasn't just drawn out of the air, but we'll learn a lot as we go through this too. So, um, and we're all going through it together. And this is where you also need to look at um, finding your peace and joy. And I want to remember, I don't want to forget something, so I'm going to kind of cut in here a little bit. Um, actually, last night, um, one of those Widowmaker tree branches was hanging from a tree outside my house, and it went down uh, when no one was around. It didn't hit a car. Uh, it actually was dangling, so it wasn't even on the ground. And... Um, uh, actually, they had to bring out bucket trucks to cut it down and do that in my own yard. So 
uh, be careful when you're taking care of all this wood that's been broken off and hanging and you can see now that they're, those leaves on the broken wood are turning brown, we can really see where they are. I wouldn't stand under them, I wouldn't put my car underneath them because guess what? It happened in my own driveway and so it's, it's a good idea to pay attention and, um, and we know it will be a while before we have enough people that can actually get rid of all of our branches that need to come down that are not safe. Okay. And um, I know many people are mourning, is mourning the loss of their trees because that's one thing that we've enjoyed. It's given us shade, it's given us a place for our birds and squirrels to be, and uh, even some raccoons have run up some trees at my house. So, you know, it, they're there for a reason, protection of, of wildlife too. So, the mourning your trees is a natural thing to do. It's, it's not uncommon, and, and I expect that. Um, but we and need, you can't just build a new one. Yeah, you know, we just can't build a new tree. It takes a while, and some won't grow in my lifetime even. So, because some of these were old trees, so we have to know that there are losses with it. But um, when you're trying to get rid of this old wood and these leaves and everything, uh, remember that to be safe because it's you know taking down a tree is not made for amateurs really you know a lot of the people that know how to do that for safety reasons to do that so Remember okay there's a burn ban oh and there's a burn ban too yes thank you Craig because well look at our I'm not even mowing because it's so dry and it's and and you know what it's not necessary it's okay there will we will mow again we will and we get to um, be proud of our yards again and enjoy them like we do. It'll happen again, but right now just let it let it uh, be the way it is right now. Um, okay, so finding your peace and joy, and among all the things that have happened, have happened, I have to share that I actually had a little bit of a, you know, going through the COVID and the spring, the summer, and everything. It was kind of like, ah, oh, you know, everything's okay. It's okay, but it's okay type of thinking, you know. And I would have to tell myself because I work from home, okay, today's Saturday, and remind myself to act like it's Saturday. I invite you to do the same when we're home. Even if, um, even if we tire, it's still Saturday for the rest of the world. Um, and so having my power back on and my internet come back, which I know has happened to everybody, but I'm blessed that it did for me, uh, it was kind of like, oh, something new, something positive out of all this. Can you believe it? So that's, I, I found myself having a little bit lighter step just because I had those back again. I had a refrigerator. So I'm very grateful for the things I have. And I know you are too. And that's how we have to try to live our lives. So find that joy, find that peace. Um, uh, have that grace of forgiveness for people that um, are learning how to find that joy themselves, you know, because it's, it's not always easy to do. Um, it's, uh, I remember on the, one of the TV stations they talked about, uh, it was, um, well now I can't, I can't say to save anything, it was Grace and well, what was, uh, I think it was Patience and then the third thing was Resolve. So Grace to Forgive, Patience as we go through this and Resolve to have that Grace and Patience to, to get through this. Does that make sense? So it was a very, I, I remember thinking, oh that really really nice so look for those things in your life and and seek out the the things that uh, you find joy in and someday we'll be able to do the crossword puzzles inside again right now I'm sure those are all put away but that was sure a fun thing at the time and and cooking will change in the fall too so we have we can look forward to that to some different foods that we haven't had for a while so it's just part of looking forward to things that and getting through the things we have no control over because we don't but we but we will have very very good things again so uh, Craig can you think of anything else right now I would just say uh, life goes by whether you live it or not so don't avoid it get out and live it safely yes yes life goes by whether you live it or not don't avoid it um, what's like and get through it safely yes and that means uh, as we walk this walk on our streets and handle wood and who knew you'd handle so much wood and uh, you know and getting through COVID and school starting and all the changes and even changes like I said of the holidays so I'm kind of talking about holidays so you kind of get you know Looking kind of forward. get that look forward to it and think about now how can we make this work the best for us and that's part of the whole thing and it will look different if or you not. think you're suffering from depression get help yes and yes and um, yes because being feeling blue and depressed throughout all this is 
would not be a surprise, okay? It would not be a surprise. It's been described to me by a lady as malaise, and I thought, that is really a good word because it's just like, yeah, everything's fine, but yeah, you know, type of thing. I still enjoy things, but yeah, you know, so we have to just kind of keep looking for that. Like I said, oh, today's Saturday, act like it's Saturday, right? That's what we need to do and act like it's going to be fall and we have changes because there will be some football games on the TV. They will be, and I'm looking forward to actually, because I'm not a real game person, to relaxing at a, in my home watching a bit ball game when I want to and just being comfortable so you know but eating good food that's why I go so until next time um, take care bye bye <laughs>